Yeah, so last fight, uh, it went well. It went almost too well. What did you take away from that fight? Um, you know, the, the, the biggest thing was, uh, I would say, the improvements that were made in that fight, right? Like, uh, you could see uh, the patience, the defense. I think I got hit with one clean shot in three rounds. You know, normally by the end of the third round, I got to get 30 stitches over this side. My nose is this way. You know, you, you, we know how I fight. So I think that fight really, um, it really showcased the work we've been putting in in the gym. That was a 15-week camp that Stevie and I did. And I also traveled a little bit as well for training, but main, the majority of the work was done here. Me and Stevie, we work, we, we work day in, day out on the defense, the short punches like that finish the fight. So, you know, there's a lot to take away from that fight, but that's the main, the main thing. Uh, what did it feel like fighting the fourth? Because this was a big dream of yours, this would be the main event of the fourth, this was the first one. What, uh, how were the pressures of that? You know, if I'm being totally honest, uh, for me it was like, before the fight was exciting, that I was in the form, I was, I was about to fight in the form, and then um, once I was in there, it's just another, another, um, another fight. Well, how does it feel living in Ontario now and uh, training consistently here at West End with Stevie compared to before when we were doing five to six weekends? Uh, yeah. And obviously, the improvements that you made. Well, actually, to be honest with you, the last, um, the last few fights, I didn't even get that, that long out of the camps. I think the camps may have been two two weeks, you know. We'd be lucky if we got two weeks of solid training in and, you know, it wasn't really um, the best the best I've looked in camps the last few fights, but managed to, you know, get the wins. But this was um, this was a game changer. Being here full time, um, you know, it takes a lot of stress off the whole team. Not just myself, but um, especially Stevie, like he, he don't gotta worry about me you know, showing up last minute, and now he's got to rush a 12-week process, it, jam it into two weeks. He's trying to get me into condition. He's trying to get my hands sharp, my defense sharp, trying to get my mind right for the fight. You know, and that's, that's pretty much impossible to do in two weeks, but somehow we've managed to do it, you know, so I've got to give a lot of credit to Stevie there. But, um, yeah, this, this one was just, it was night and day. Yeah, it's definitely been a pleasure having you around for yeah. Uh, I want to talk right now about. I want to talk right now about. Uh, how does it feel being ranked seventh in the WBC and not to the organization to be such a, a top ranked fighter in Canada? Uh, you know what? To me, it's like I've always said from day one. It's just numbers. Obviously, it's it's, it's to be honest with you, it's more exciting for my supporters and my team than it is for me personally because personally I um, I got an old school look on boxing I've always have you know I study the greats like Jack Dempsey and, and Joe Lewis and those eras the 20s the 30s the 40s so the way that they did it that's kind of the way that I'm I'm trying to go about it so yeah you know the rank is cool but to me it's just about fighting the best guys in the world um, so you know being high ranked it's like I said, it's more exciting for my team really than it is for me. I just want I just want the fights against the best. So that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm working towards right now. And I'm ready to talk any shit I got to talk to get the fights because apparently just knocking people out alone isn't going to cut it. <laughs> what do you see happening at the end of 2023? I think by the end of 2023, I'm going to get a big break. I think um, everybody on my team has sacrificed. You know. Um, the, the sacrifices that have been made outside the ring, you couldn't imagine. So it's like, it, I think I believe in that karma, you know, like um, what, what you uh, what you put in, you get back, kind of thing. And like I've been putting in the work for 14 years. That it, I, like people don't know, I dropped out of high school, I quit jobs, I, I you know, I've done everything. I've sacrificed my entire life for boxing. So um, you know, my promoter Dan actually said. Uh, Early this year, he told me, you're going to get a world title shot before the end of 2023. Mark my words. And I'm holding them to it. You know, I want it. I'll say with Dan, if he says it, he means it. Yeah. And he envisions it. Yeah. How about the September 30th, uh, uh, the fight in September 30th in Hamilton? How's it doing the main event Hamilton again? And uh, have I another show there? And obviously, opponents and titles will be released in the 
fit, but we all know this is going to be a big one. It's going to be a nice one. How's that feel? I think it's time for me to open up the card and somebody else to fight the main event. <laughs> you know? Give somebody else the chance to, to be the star of the show. I like, um, I just love fighting. You know, whether I'm main event or the first fight on the night, it doesn't matter to me. Um, but I'm excited that I got a good opponent. I'm not going to give his name out yet because we all know the drill with the opponents. Um, there seems to be some kind of jinx. If they promote the fight too early, I don't know what's going on, but this, these cruiser rates seem to get cold feet. So I'm going to keep the opponent on the down low until he signs a contract and maybe a little side contract that says, you know, if so-and-so pulls out of this fight before this date, you know, there's going to be some sort of penalty. I think that that should be something that should start being looked at in boxing because, you know, I'm not the only scary fighter out there. There's, there's, this happens a lot in boxing. So maybe, uh, maybe I can start a new trend where, you know, we save fighters from getting cold feet and pulling out of fights. So in Hamilton, we've actually had, uh, I don't think we've had a fighter pull out no, we've had fighters pull out for Hamilton shows. Before I fought, um, that's why I had to fight uh, Jermaine Montez at heavyweight. He was a 230 pound heavyweight. A lot of people don't know that number. No, no, we, we had a cruiserweight fight. Every time I go to heavyweight, it's because a cruiserweight pulls out. Every time. Yeah. Let's talk about Sadie Jack. What's your thoughts on his fight with Canelo falling off? Yeah. I mean, it sucks. I honestly wanted to see it. I think that would have been an interesting fight, you know. Badu Jack still got a lot in the tank. He's, uh, you know, his last fight he took out a, a serious world champion, Macabo, and that's like that's a major statement for him to do to come up from light heavyweight, no, come up from super middleweight, work his way up to cruiserweight, and then take out a dominant champion like uh, Macabo, you know. So, but but uh, the. As far as the Canelo fight goes, it's too bad that didn't happen. Because it would have been nice to have Canelo's name in with the mix with the cruiser rates. Oh, yeah. How would a fight with you and Bad News Jack go? Me and him, um, you know, uh, he's got experience, but so do I now, too. That's something that it's time to start taking into consideration when you talk about me going up against these high level guys. Well, these high-level guys, a lot of them haven't been in half the wars I've been in. They haven't been in one fight. Like, my easiest fight, some of them guys, was their hardest fight. You know, so that's something to, to start taking into consideration. So, you know, I'm not even going to say his experience. I'm just going to say it would be a champ, um, you know, a defending champion versus a hungry contender. And uh, I believe I'd be the hardest puncher he's ever felt in his life, and I'd be the hungriest fighter that he's ever faced. That's probably, that would be my prediction. If they called for the fight right now, would you accept it? Right now. Right now. No questions. No questions. We fight tonight. Is that the fight that interests you the most? 100%, because uh, he's the guy, you know? He's the guy that um, everybody's looking at as the, you know, the most wanted fight in the cruiserweight division, because he's got the WBC belt. All the belts are important, but there seems to be something about that WBC belt that uh, it just it seems to be the most meaningful world title today. It's the green belt. It's the green belt. Uh, if that fight happens, what predictions do you have? Against? Against Badu Jack. Okay. Me and Badu Jack? Yeah. I mean... Obviously the fight will take place in Saudi Arabia, so you can touch on that too. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm I'm confident that I would probably end his career, but you know what? He might end mine too. I got to be as confident as I am that I would, you know, knock him out cold. I'm also aware that he could, you know, he could damage me as well. It's boxing, 10 ounce gloves, 200 pound men swinging. Anything can happen, I've always said that. But I believe it, if the fight happens, it's my time. You know, I've already got the world title shot and I gave up every advantage possible at, you know, and I still went out, did my thing. And I just think that like, not too many cruiserweights would have done that, what I done when I took that fight against Rebus. No, I don't think any of them would. Like, how do you think Chris Billum Smith would have done against the prime Oscar Rebus? He would have got ran over like a truck hitting a rabbit. You know what I'm saying? So like, 
what I've already done in the cruiserweight division, I think needs um, a little bit more respect, number one. And then, um, you know, number two, just like, I think when, it, when the time comes, I'm ready. Like I said, I got that experience and uh, I'm confident I could pull off any upset on any night. What's your thoughts on fighting in the Middle East? In the Middle East? Yeah. Middle East to what? I don't even know what that is. Was it hot over there? It's in Saudi Arabia. In the middle of the desert. Yeah? yeah. Better wear my sunscreen. Yeah. <laughs> Are there any other current cruiserweight champions or what is today? All of them. All of them. All of them. Is there an order of uh, titles or people that you'd like to see? No. No, like anybody in the top 10, anybody in the top 20, anybody who's considered one of the best fighters in the world, I want to fight them. Because, see, I got this thing, I don't, think, um, I don't think there is a best fighter in the world. I don't think there is. I think that um, it's impossible to, to determine who is the actual best. There's only one way, and that's the way it used to be done back in the day, where let's say the top five. We narrow it down to five, five of the best. Now all five of those guys are going to fight each other two or three times. You know what I mean? They got all got to fight each other two or three times. Then you'll get you then you'll decide you'll you'll have a pretty good idea at who's the best fighter. Because if you let's say me and Badu Jack we fought five times. That's five different fights on five different nights. You'll have five different outcomes. How the hell can you determine who's the better fighter? You know what I mean? Out of all those guys in the top 10. That's why I've been saying the world title is not it's not that important to me to get that world title. It's about winning, winning the belt. So now I have something that all the other guys want. Now they all want to come for me. And now I'm going to get my chance to fight each and every one of them, one by one. Yeah, they got to come to you to get it. They got to come to me to get it. They can't duck and dodge, run and hide.